Welcome to the Ultimate Bloons TD6 Strategy Series where I'm going to be showing you strategies for every single tower from the Dart Monkey to the Beast Handler and every single path in between. This will show you how to diversify your setup and get better along with seeing some stats, tips and tricks and all of the strategies for every single one of the towers. And although that the series is geared more towards chimps mode, this will also show you a lot of tips and tricks that apply to the standard game and will allow you to win with a new style. So moving on to the last of the aces, we have the bottom path ace, which involves the specter and the nevimus ace. So let's get right into this. So starting off with the nevimus ace, this guy's really, really strong and can do some pretty amazing things, even on some pretty tricky maps. It can really be used like anywhere. So it has a great early game carry and a really strong mid game to carry too. The Spectre, on the other hand, has the mid-game carry and can do some late-game damage. It's limited to some maps. It may not be good on some, especially some of the harder maps. It's not as good, so we'll be taking a look at that, too. They're very, very different towers, but they're all pretty cool, and I love them both. Very cool, Mr. Spectre. So let's take a look at some of the stats here. This guy's really, really strong. It may not actually look that strong just as a base, but with the cross path, it really enhances its capabilities and the Alec buff makes it super strong. The Spectre has a lot of stats as opposed to the Neva Miss, which is kind of crazy, but this guy has a whole bunch of attacks, can do a lot of really cool things, and on a map that it's good on, it can do quite a lot. So the cross path's all super easy. You get the top two, so 203, and 204 um, so we're gonna be chilling with that and I guess I didn't mention it yet but big plane is out of this episode it's just too expensive you can like get him on chimps mode but you don't really see it a lot so I'm just not including it in this episode anyways we're going to be getting a berserker brew for our nevimus ace you just really need this guy with the berserker brew and a village with the cross path you're gonna be just doing an insane amount of damage so for the Spectre, we're going to be keeping that Alec buff, and I'm going to be getting an MIB. You need an MIB for DDTs. However, if you're doing this for a mid-game carry, you don't really need that MIB. You can just have a regular camo village. So as you can see, just with the camo village, it doesn't do that great against DDTs with an MIB. You can throw that in, and it's going to be doing very well, a lot better. So if you're using the Spectre just for a mid-game carry, you don't need to worry about that. If you're going to be doing late-game damage, you need to consider that in the early part so now i'm going to be getting another tower an overclock if you're using a single specter an overclock can be great if you're using two you probably want to look into getting a cta instead of two overclocks but this will really enhance the specter's capabilities and it can take out a good quantity of ddts like just on its own without really any support besides that which is quite surprising on maps that it's good on. And when it comes to the maps that it's good on, as I said, never miss. You really can throw this guy anywhere. It's going to be super good. But for the Spectre, you want it on maps where it can shoot directly into it. And if it's multi-lane map, it suffers a lot. But this is an exception because they're both like going in the same direction. So you want to put them in the back of the track. You can use the center path to target them way in the back and then they will shred. So when it comes to heroes, you can use any heroes. You can use Rosalia though if you're getting multiple specters because that will actually save a pretty good amount of money and Rosalia does some good damage too. So I'm going to be checking this out. The objectives here are never miss early uh, game carry, the never miss mid game carry, specter mid game carry, and specter late game. So there's a lot of stuff to go through so let's get right into it. So the first run, I'm going to be doing this on Blue Narius Prime. We're going to have a pretty chill run. I'm just going to get a uh, starting tower. So we're going to have that ninja to beat some of the early balloons so we can get churchill and then with some power you obviously can't like start or go directly into an ace so you're going to need a little bit of power for the fur front with a starter and then you can get and never miss early and this thing will just shred through the early game no problem camo is going to be a little bit of a concern because you probably aren't going to have a camo village up that early so this is going to be fine dealing with that and then what we're going to do is for round 40, as long as we have the cross path and an alc buff, even on some pretty hard maps, you're just absolutely going to melt round 40. You can couple that with the hero, and that Moab's going nowhere. So I didn't even have alc buff there, and it still did very well, but it gets a lot more power from alc buff. So I'm just keeping this guy way in the back, and you want to keep him just like that. Far away from the balloons, he's going to be doing a lot of work. So I get my village out left there, and now we're just going to be absolutely shredding. So basically, it may not be like completely 
easy to understand for you, but you just want to keep it in the back because shooting into with a type of projectile like this that like seeks around and moves around is a lot better than chasing at the balloons. Because if you're shooting from like the back, the as I just said, it has to chase, it has to move along and catch up to the projectile. But if you're shooting into, then the projectile just has to move forward and it's going to eventually collide with the Moab or balloon or whatever it is a lot quicker and you're going to be dealing a lot more damage a lot more consistently a lot better so anyways this guy is just super strong it makes it a really easy save up for play early game control mid game really good too you can use it just in the early game and mid game because why not but i'm going to take it a step further and i'm going to grab specter and we're going to do a mid game carry now a lot of people hate specter but i love specter specter is very cool if you have the right map for it oh and i got vet level 56 there but if you have the right map for it you can do a lot with it and you can go quite far and do quite a good mid game carry so say you want to buy something expensive um well we can do that so we're gonna grab the specter and start saving up so from here we got 50k saved up you could get like an avatar wrath quite easy but let's take a step further go into 62k that's like a bad save up rate a best save up right there we're pushing it even further and i was kind of close to be getting into big plane that would have been pretty cool to get big plane with just this on like a black border run unfortunately we're a little bit far off big plane's not really the greatest thing to go for especially if you don't have rosalia then it's going to be quite expensive um so big plane's a little bit out of the picture but still like eighty thousand dollars that is quite a strong save up just for like the specter and a little bit of support um going even further past 94 we're pushing into like 88k which is quite crazy just use some churchill abilities and we're there and then i'll reach 90k but um i don't really just have any power to beat around 95 so that is quite a strong save up you really can do a lot with ninety thousand dollars so i decided i'll just throw in some towers and have a very free rest of the game so pretty cool strategy that you can use you can just use a specter in the mid game and it'll push you very very far again of course you probably want to go for the towers that you're saving up for a lot earlier so it's pretty easy but it this also is just going to have a bunch of impact in late game too it's not like it's going to be doing a crazy amount of damage in the late game but with just one specter you can do a decent amount of stuff you can also of course like in this example spend all this cash that i'm not spending on some support and stuff but yeah just a very great tower very cool um i love specter you can do a lot of cool things people hate on it but maybe you should give the specter a try because specter gaming is specter life anyways let's go on to the next example so this is a bit of a different approach it's not really as strong as mid game because mid game is kind of where specter shines but i'm going to be going on to dark castle which is another map that's going to be great for the specter one single lane that can shoot straight down it do a lot of damage use its pierce up very well albeit it's a very short part of the single lane um, before it's single lane the specters really don't do as much damage so it's a little bit deceivingly tricky with the strategy but i thought it would work out pretty well so i decided to go for it so now because i'm going to be getting two specters thought might as well bring rosalia we're going to be saving a good amount of money with her discount which is 10 percent now so that's going to be nice and we're going to be greeting some discounts so with rosalia one cool thing that you can do is you can very easily read double discount and get never miss before round 40 even on something like dark house because rosalia used two of her abilities in round 40 is just gone like that was easy i don't even have the cross path or an alk buff on that never miss and i was able to take it down just fine so now i'm going to be able to with that double discount i'll be able to get a cta and drums we're going to make everything super cheap get grab the cross path alk buff on the ace and then i'll get another ace and then that will allow me to save up into a specter and because rosalie is a lot cheaper we can get all of this stuff all of this greed all of this firepower and still get the specter before the tricky rounds come in so we're gonna have two of these guys we're gonna get both of them to a specter we're gonna get a village to a cta and we just have a gigantic amount of power going into the late game plus all of the rosalia buffs and levels that we'll be getting along the way especially from the recent update she got a lot of power recently um so that's that's pretty nice 
you can really justify a lot more strategies with Rosalia because before there was really only one thing that I found that could do effectively with Rosalia, but now she gives a lot better discount, does a lot better damage, is pretty good in the late game too. So I'm going to be getting this first Spectre, and then we're going to move on after that damage into the next part of the strategy, which is just some support. And uh, what I'm really going to do for that is just get something to clump everything up so we can utilize the Spectre's Pierce. And especially when we use Call to Arms, we're going to be getting 50% more attack speed on all towers of the map, but also 50% more Pierce. So when we couple all of that Pierce together, we really can affect like every single balloon on the screen very easily and so allow us to just like shred larger rounds like round 98 which is something that Spectre might have traditionally struggled at a little bit more and to do this I'm going to be getting either an Icicle Impale or a Super Glue. I honestly think with especially a lot of recent buffs the Super Glue is just a bit better than the Icicle Impale but the Icicle Impale is also pretty good. I decided to get Icicle Impale here pretty nicely so we got that so that's uh, another reason for that double discount we can get a primary training and the call to arms and save a lot of money so that's pretty cool so we're going to be getting that second specter going to get a cta up there and then that icicle impale will be incoming another thing that i decided to do is just remove the trees for four thousand dollars typically you wouldn't really want to do that but just because we're having all of our global damage i thought for four thousand dollars it might be worth it so i decided to do that but Regular, on regular games of ouch, no not ouch, this is definitely not ouch, what am I saying? On regular games of Dark Castle, you typically would not want to spend 4k to remove that. But because we're doing all of our damage from like these aces that will be doing damage when these trees are down, I decided it would be worth it. So I get that, and now I'm saving up money for the call to arms. And the MIB2, I guess. One thing that you need to be careful here is that you'll be able to actually afford the MIB in time. Um, I wasn't really planning around this and I also misplaced an ice so to buy it again, but I was kind of close on the MIB so you want to kind of just make sure that won't happen. Maybe you should pull down uh, some of the cross paths on that icicle and pale or like the icicle and pale upgrade itself until later and get away with Rosalia's. Uh, abilities maybe for like around 87 that stuff but I was able to get the the MIB up a bit before so that was pretty nice now the DDTs are coming in they're gonna be taken down and the Icicle Impale is doing its job gonna round things off with just like a relentless glue get some consistency the Icicle Impale I find is just a bit more inconsistent seems like the splatter hole splatter effect from the glue with the super glue just seems to get things a bit easier than the icicle impale but the icicle impale is indeed very good at taking out the zero mgs or well slowing down the zero mgs and the ddts considerably which is really nice i'm just going to round everything off with rosalie's abilities grab that call to arms just before round 96 we can use it there if we wanted to and we'll have it back for 98 and 100 we're going to get a first strike two to deal with 100 kind of cutting it close on the money so if you're using the strategy this is pretty much all you're going to have you're just going to have your two specters that cta some out buffs a little bit of support and the first strike so definitely one that you really need to be money conscious but if you have the whole setup together you can get it in chimps mode and it will do pretty well so I recommend trying this. If there's a map that you think would work really well with Spectre, it might be fun to give it a go. So that's pretty much it. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you want to help out the channel, you can check out these new videos, like and subscribe for more content, support the channel by becoming a member, and joining the Discord to chat with the community. Bye.